And also, the aura of the woman is also her voice. We know this. Because Aisha radiallahu anha, after the Prophet وسلم, passed away, the companions used to come to her door to take lessons from her, to take a hadith from her, to take ahkam from her. And when they used to come and speak to her, she used to put her finger in her mouth to disguise her voice. Because she was 18 years old when the Prophet وسلم, passed away, and she was a beautiful woman. So even she did not want her voice, her natural voice, to cause fitna for any man behind the door, behind, behind the curtain. So the sisters should not be talking on the phone. Salaamu Alaikum Aki, Kev Halik Aki, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, how's your wife, how's your family? No, my husband is not here. MashaAllah, Salaamu Alaikum. No, no, sister. Allah said, do not be de decorative in your speech, but do your speech, which is what? Straightforward. Salaamu Alaikum. No, no, brother, my husband is not here. No, I don't know. Insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum. See? You see the difference? The brother, he will not want to talk more with her. And she's being straightforward and she's guarding herself. And she's not leaving any room for any fooling around. This is the kind of sister who is guarding herself, guarding her husband, guarding her morals. Because she's doing what? She's controlling even her speech. Also, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time he passed through his masjid and he passed by some women and he said to them, O oh women, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed me to see into the hellfire and I saw that many of its inhabitants was women. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, how come? He said, because one, they are given to cursing, complaining, and spreading gossip. And they are also ungrateful to their husbands so that if their husband gives them everything, when they become angry with him, they say, you never give me nothing. You are no good. See? So one, they are given to gossip and loose talk. Secondly, they are ungrateful to their husbands and they are complaining too much. And we know that Amr ibn al-Khattab although the Prophet وسلم, used to let the women come to the masjid to pray, isn't it? In the time of Amr, when he used to give the khutbah in the Prophet's masjid, he used to keep by him a bucket of some small stones, maybe some date stones, and he used to reach down while he was giving the khutbah and take those stones and throw them at the women and chase them from the masjid. And they complained to Aisha radiallahu anha. Why is Umar uh, uh, chasing us from the mosque? Why is he acting like that? We used to come in the time of the Prophet وسلم, but Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, yes, but you were not dressing that way. And you were not talking that way. And you were not wearing the lipstick and the decorations on your faces that way. Subhanallah. You see? So, our sisters should guard themselves and control themselves and understand that they are the flowers of Islam. They are also the handmaidens of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are the front line. They are the front line of the home defense. As I joke sometimes and I tell brothers, I have to go. The minister of the interior, she told me, be home, don't stay too long. Yes, it's true. The sisters have the right. Inside the home, they are in charge. Don't come home with your chest poked out. Where's the food? What's going on? Blah, blah. Go get this. Why you didn't? Be quiet. Leave the sister alone. Don't tell her what kind of curtains. Don't tell her what to do. Don't tell her what to fix. Don't tell her so she don't have to do nothing for you. Nothing. You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ar-Rijal, kawamuna al-Nisa.
This don't mean that you are the commander of the women. No, you have responsibility to them. She don't even have to work. She don't have to lift a cup. She don't have to do any work. She don't have to, she don't have to clean your clothes. She don't have to iron your clothes. She don't have to wash no dishes. She don't have to cook no food for you. She don't have to do anything. This is not her job. If you want somebody to do that, go hire a servant. But if she does that, this will be a blessing for her in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you marry her, this don't mean you have a slave, you got a servant. If she does it for you, this is a nafil for her. This is good for her. She should do that to want to serve her husband, to, to obtain his pleasure. Because the pleasure of the husband is next to what? The pleasure of Allah. The displeasure of the husband is next to the displeasure of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said that the husband that goes to sleep while he is displeased with her husband, what happens? The malaika curse her all of the night. So she should always want her husband to be pleased. And she does these things to please you. But it is not her obligation because of the marriage to iron your clothes, to wash your clothes, to fix your food, to sew your clothes. Because the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, what did he do? Did he do those things? Himself. To relieve her because he was grateful. So the man when he comes to the house, he should be grateful if his wife, she fixed the food for him, she cleaned the house for him. She's taking care of the children. She's taking care of herself. She's taking care of the house. She's taking care of your honor, your reputation. She's the home line defense. And this is not an easy job. So brothers, don't put more responsibility on her by your demands. And at the same token, be grateful from time to time. Give her relief. Buy her gifts. Say nice things to her. Compliment her. Show your gratitude towards her. Because she's also the mother of your children. And if she's not, if, she, if your wife is stressed out, if she's full of anxiety all the time and depressed, what do you think the children will be? They will be also stressed out and anxiety because she will pass it right down. So my sisters, inside of your homes, keep your home clean. Keep yourself clean. Keep your children clean. Make your husband clean. Feel good and relaxed when he comes home. Don't meet him at the door, badgering him. Where have you been? Where is the groceries? Where is the money? What you promised me? Who are you talking to? What is this? What is that? You said that or the so and so and so. You da blah 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 blah. This kind of woman, she may wind up by herself. She may wind up by herself, especially in the age we're living in today. The man, he doesn't have to. Too many women. There's too many fish in the sea. I don't care what you provide him with, how beautiful that you are, and what treasure you think you represent. Too many fish in the sea. If you want to know, let me give you the statistics, sisters. This is another subject I'm going to talk to you about later on. But let me just tell you. Already in the Western world, there is 2.5 women to every man. Just add with me. If you take away the men who are homosexuals, now you come to what? 3.5, right? <laughs> now this is the truth. Then if you take the men who want to be playboys, they don't want to get married. Now it's what? 4.5, isn't it? Then you take the men who are on drugs and alcohol, what do you get? 5.5. Because now we're talking about 2.5 Women to every male, not men, male. So we're at 2.5, we're at 5.5 now. What about the men who's in the jail? They will not come out 10, 15 years. Now you got what? 6.5. What about the men who's at war? Maybe they will not come back. Where we at now? We're at 7.5. What about the men who is confused? They don't know whether they want to be a male or female. They don't know what they want to be. They're just floating around. 
Now you add 8.5. What about the derelict men? They're bums. They're irresponsible. They're living and eating off their mother. They're 30 years old. What about them? Now you add 9.5. So if all the women was able to marry a man for themselves, what will happen to all the other sisters?